Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's uh, up 25. Nasdaq's down four. S&Ps are off uh, eight and a half. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Rob McEwen. Rob, folks, is the uh, chairman and chief owner of McEwen Mining. Uh, McEwen Mining trades on the NYSE under the symbol MUX. Rob McEwen, welcome back to TFNN. Thank you, Tom. Great to be here. And great to see you, man. So uh, tell us what's been going on with McEwen Mining. McEwen Mining, folks, does business in North and South America, folks. Uh, we've, we've been pushing on our profit margins. They, last year was very difficult for us, and so far this year we diverged from the, uh, the industry in terms of share performance. So right now uh, we're in the process of turning that around and trying to catch up to where we lost the ground. And is there is there a certain mine, Rob, that that you feel that you, that you lost some ground in, or, or is it just an, an overall aspect? There were a number of events that were non-recurring last year. There was a fire. There was a flood. Yes. Uh, <laughs> there was some excess taxation in Argentina. Okay. And all of those uh, are behind us. Um, so. And how and then, how has COVID affected affected the production? It's had a big impact. Yeah, uh, we went out um, in the second quarter and we shut down all of our operations out of concern for our employees' health and their family and community's health. Sure, they've started up. Some of them um, are still not operating at peak performance, such as Argentina, where you only have about sixty percent of the workforce uh, due to travel restrictions within the country. Right. So, um, yeah, it took a our revenue took a hit, and but the expenses were still there, so uh, we weren't showing as well in the second or third quarter. Fourth quarter feels better. Nice, and you know, let me ask you the the metals business in general. Where do you think the metals business in general is right now? I think it's in a good spot. Um, the metals come into play. The precious metals, gold and that, come into play yes. when there's uncertainty. Right and. I, I think everyone would agree there's a lot of uncertainty in the world right now. Isn't COVID. it amazing that, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just saying, COVID and other, I mean. Sure. We've seen an enormous expansion of the money supply, debt levels, you know, 25% of the global debt is now with a negative yield. Um, that, that has big ramifications going forward for a lot of situations that rely on interest income to uh, deliver on their plans like life insurance and pension plans. Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a big number. You know, so let me ask you something. When we look back, right, and, you know, we've been, I think the first time I interviewed was like 2002 when you had Gold Corp at the show. I think that's what it was, 2003 or 4. Um, <laughs> and, you know, then we, we had the downdraft financial crisis in 2007, 2008. And, you know, folks like us who always think, okay, inflation's going to creep in. It never crept in. Now we get six trillion dollars just in the United States coming in. And so what's intriguing to me is this, is that this time it seems like, OK, the last time the banks got the money, this time everyone got the money. So going forward, I mean, it's pretty amazing when we look at the price of gold in 1860 and the dollar was just hanging on. I mean, it looks to me like this dollar wants to break this 90. We'll see how that goes. But so so what do you think about do you think inflation will creep in here, or do you think it's already crept in? Or where, where are you at with something like that? It's crept into a number of areas, Tom. I mean, you look at insurance rates, they seem to have gone up Oof, in many areas. They have. Huge. Huge in food. Florida. Yeah. yeah. Food prices. Yep. Moving. Um, and, and you're starting to see the commodity prices moving up, not only food, but right. building materials are in short supply. Metal prices have moved up quite smartly. And that's all reflecting the, the larger amounts of money in the system yes. and shortages that are starting to be recognized as a result of COVID disrupting a lot. Now, now what type of uh, price do you need gold to be in order for McEwen Mining to continue to, to basically make money? Oh, we can do it at these prices. Okay. Higher prices makes it obviously sure. even better. Right, yeah. right. And on, on silver, is silver getting there? Is, where, where is the, you know, if we, if we look at the ratio between gold and silver, silver at uh, 25 bucks, is, is that good for the metal companies in general? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. But, yeah. I mean, the ratio is still quite high relative to gold. Yes. And 
but we're going to have to see a better gold price to cause silver to go higher. Yeah, yeah. no, I we'll can see, see that. The impression of that exchange ratio. What have what have you seen in the the industry in general? Meaning the other folks that have gold companies, you know, the larger producers. Uh, are you seeing that they're sniffing around now, looking for some action? Where, where do you see that laying out? Let's say in the next couple of years. We've seen an increasing amount of M and A going on, and and in the last six months, we've seen exploration stories really start to move. Yes, a few of them. I think a lot are still overlooked, and there are turnaround situations people should be looking at. Um, but I, I, I'd say we're early stage right now. Yeah, now it, it's going to get intriguing watching how this plays out because it's it's hard to get the fundamental aspect in your head. I mean, fundamentally, I can look at this and say, okay, we should be a lot higher. And, and I'm not saying that because I like gold. It's just that the, the ratio, I mean, $6 trillion, just the United States. I mean, hey, that, you know, there's no free lunch. We know that, right? But the, the fact of the matter is that it, it seems that until this dollar breaks down, which it's, I think it's going to be close to, um, it is what it is, you know. And so it's and, and you know, when I look at something like Bitcoin, I say, I say, what, what is the like the investors out of their mind? Bitcoin's at eighteen thousand dollars this morning. And, you know, and let, well, let me ask you this. When you hear that, like, you know, we hear these stories like Bitcoin's better than gold. What do you think about that? People, um, the one thing that Bitcoin offers is it's you're able to move it quickly across borders. OK, yeah, so it's hard to pick up gold and move it. Yeah. Uh, whether or not there's any substance behind Bitcoin is a, is the bigger question. Yes. Right. Right. So looking at, at your company, you know, and folks, Rob has uh, over 20 percent position inside the company. You know, investors, you know, basically looking at MUX today. What would you say to them to say that, OK, listen, this is a great stock going forward. Why should I buy it? I'd look at the price. Uh, we've gotten beaten up. Our performance has gone in the opposite direction to the industry as a result of the problems we experienced last year and part of this year. Those seem to be behind us. And if we were to catch up to where we were historically, um, that's a big move without gold moving any. Yes. Right. And, you know, folks, have, I've, I've followed Rob and his companies for a long period of time. And I. Uh, Realistically, Rob, if it only got, if it only go get flat, you get higher. I mean, you've always got kind of a premium. That's because you've been, you know, you've been very successful and you've made people an awful lot of money. You know, so really interesting. It's going to be an interesting guy, a couple of years. There's no doubt, man. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, listen, you have a great one, a safe one. We really appreciate you coming on, and we look forward to having you again, Rob.